Hey everybody, Glenn here again with DigitalSandwich.net. Today I want to show you how to clone objects on a Cinema 4D's hair system. So all these trees are being cloned by Cinema 4D's hair system. And the reason you might want to do this with a hair system instead of a cloner is that you get all the added benefits of hair. And let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to hit play. I have a wind system here that's blowing these in the wind very gently. I can grab my collider objects. And I can just brush it through. It's going to affect these just like it would hair. I can uh, grab my ground plane here and I can, you know, start moving it around and everything's going to move accordingly. I can grab this and just kind of shake it and everything's going to move just like hair would move. And it's really easy to set up. It has a lot of benefits. And let me show you how I did this real quick. So let me start a new scene. I'll paste in my tree object. So this tree is just four cones in a cylinder merged together into a single object. So now I'm going to need a ground plane to put this on, so I'm going to go in and make a plane. Now to clone this onto hair, we're going to need some hair, so let's go to simulate. Hair objects, add hair, it's going to add all of these guide hairs. And that's way too many for what we need, so I'm going to go in and lower the count quite a bit. Go to about 14, if we hit render, you can see there's still a ton of hairs, and that's because the hair system interpolates hairs in between all of the guides. So to stop it from doing this, let's go into hairs, under roots find root and change this to as guides. We render again only our guides are going to be hairs which is exactly what we want. So now to make our trees these hairs let's go to generate under type let's go to instance it's going to bring up this instance tab in our attribute editor. I'm going to drag my tree object into the object part and it looks like nothing really happened but our trees are actually here right now they're just really really thin. That's because the hair material is telling us how thick these objects are. So under thickness, if I change this to about, say, 35, you can see here are our trees. And you know if you wanted the top a little bit thinner, you can just go in and change this a little bit. And it's going to update your instance. So if we hit render again, you can see there's two big problems. There's no material on our tree for one, and the other one is there's this big, ugly, brown blob behind our trees. Now the big brown blob is the hair actually rendering behind our trees. So to turn this off, let's go back into our hair in the attribute editor. Let's flip off render hairs and to get our materials back, so all I have to do is click this keep textures button. Let's render again. There it is. I will hide our original tree. And if I hit play right now, it's going to fall and act really weird. Actually, let me give ourselves a little bit more time to play with. So the trees are just going to droop and sag, and that's because, you know, gravity's pulling the hair down. Actually, let me add a hair collider onto the ground here. So this just falls and it actually looks kind of funny. You know, you can grab this, you can shake it around, you can do kind of whatever you want. But I want my trees to stand straight up. So I'm going to go into hair again. Under dynamics, I'm going to click rigid. And that's going to flip my hair straight up. Now I can go and shake these around. And they're going to act just like hair. You can add some wind. Let's go to simulate particles. Wind. I can crank this up. crank this up. Uh, let's do a little more. My trees are going to start blowing in the wind. Actually, that's way too much. My trees are going to start blowing in the wind. I can go in. I can grab a big sphere or something. I can add a hair collider tag to this. And I can start bumping my trees out of the way. You can make your wind give it a fall off. So now only as it flies over it will it start blowing so you can have like a, you know, a UFO or something fly over here and as it's going it'll start blowing your trees. But you get the idea. There's a lot you can do with this. So anywhere you can put hair, any way you can use hair, you can use this effect with an instance object instead of hair. It's a really handy trick and it's really powerful. Just one thing to keep note of is the object that you instance has to have some kind of geometry to it. To actually bend. It's not going to bend if there's nothing there, obviously. So just make sure you have enough edges around that it can actually bend and deform properly before you do anything. So for DigitalSandwich.net, this is Glenn with cloning objects on a Cinema 4D's hair system.